side. Rula flashes and heals to safety. He gets one. Let's go yes. into the wall. Triple kill picked up for Rula. They take down Team WE and qualify for a rematch with their Skate Telecom in the championship finals. Welcome everyone to Worlds Tonight as we finish off the semifinals here from Shanghai. I am joined by Papa Smithy, probably very happy Papa Smithy, as well as Azale to break down what happened today. And we're also going to take a look at some epic moments from the semifinals over the years. And I would say today, less epic maybe, more really a show of dominance from Samsung. Is that the right way to approach it? I think that's, that's the right verbiage there. Honestly, it was as expectations mostly, specifically the manner of the victories here, because it was so impressive to see Samsung, sure, make some misplays in the first game, maybe make some overlookings in the draft that were punished, but from there, it really felt like the windows for WWE to even answer them, to actually make any counterplay, got smaller and smaller as the series went on. And while I wouldn't say it's you know unpredictable, it was still certainly very exciting to see this high level from Samsung. And I think that the level that they've shown both in the quarters and the semifinals does make you excited for the potential of a new world champion because it's rare to see a team looking this good going into the finals that is not SKT. And you mentioned it, they had a long way to coming, not just in the knockout phase, but before that, even in groups. So as we take a look at the bracket, how those two teams have made it to the final, obviously, Samsung has looked very dominant if we look straight at the numbers and the game wins, because it looks like SKT needed to do a lot more to get there. And that's a fair read. SKT have toiled, honestly, after the groups. They have had to take 10 games. If you think about it, in 2015, when they won their second World Championship, they took 10 games to win Worlds when the quarter started. 3-0, 3-0, 3-1. Now it's 10 games already. Very defined weaknesses. And you look at Samsung, and if they play like game two through four of this series, the weaknesses, they're pretty small. They certainly are, but at the end of the day, it's the thing you hear time and time again. It's kind of... Turn the nameplates off. Oh, SKT is going to lose. Turn them on. Well, they're probably still going to win, right? It's always this thing in the back of your head, even Echo Today in multiple interviews that you had with the Samsung members talking about there's just something about SKT when their backs are up against the wall. It feels different than it does with any other team because you know they have the ability to come back. You know they have come back in these series so many times, and there's so much history to support it that I feel like it really does get in the players' heads. It gets in their minds, and it, I think, affects the way that they play. Well, we can pick this back up after we talk about the series because we do have to dive into what happened today because Team WE started out looking strong. Game one, they, they had a couple of new things. They put the castle in, in the mid lane, and it looked like it would go a different way. Yeah, there were a lot of criticisms of the draft, especially from the analyst desk, and I think they were realized with how the game played out. The Zion Rakan were the fulcrum of what was a systematic win from WE. They won bot lane, they ganked top lane, the same time they rotated through with the Zion Rakan, the Lovers duo, and it looked pretty academic for the side of WE. It really did, and honestly, this game one was the only time I really had major criticism for Kube. I didn't think that the cannon pick made a lot of sense when you're playing into a Cassid and into a Zaya who have abilities to actually get out of this ultimate. It's not upfront damage, it is kind of backloaded into the ultimate mostly now, and even into the Shen. I don't think it's as dominant of a pick as some of the others, so when you give up so much, to get this kind of counter pick in top lane, I feel like you need a massive amount of impact. And at the start of that game one, it didn't feel like they got that. And it did make you think, hey, maybe Samsung is not as prepared as we had expected. And then the rest of the series happened. Well, then the rest of the series happened. Uh, all the good things that cast in and out of GA in game one and all the good team play together. You think in game two, hey, uh, they're getting a lot of tools. They get a Galio, they get a Jarvan, but, but where does it turn? Because here it's still looking really good for WA. I mean, this was one of their really big teleport plays. And what you'll see through these replays, I haven't even pre-screened them, but I know it's going to be a lot of Wombo because at the end of the day, yep. from game two through game four, it was a lot of think about the best case scenario. Jarvan, Galio. Galio, Rumble, Twitch, variants of these comps. The thing was that Samsung, they took disengage, they chose their spot, they played the map well, and they basically said, hey, if this team fight doesn't go 100% to plan, we're just going to win the game around all of your engagement. And I think they did such a good job of actually avoiding the engage until they had Definite. massive advantages, right? They took winning top lane, winning bot lane, they took an even or so mid lane, you know, Malzahar, someone who can deal with the Galio, and when you're pushing in your opponents, it's hard for them to group up and make those plays without the risk of losing turrets on the other side of the map, and it's also very hard, even if you pull off that wombo combo, when you're down, 
about six turrets to one, which is the situation that WE was in when they finally started getting some of these major fights. So what did it come down to then? If, if we look at game two, did WE just not have the map as a whole in mind and were just looking to start these fights and lost the macro in the process? There's a lot of different ways to look at it and to be a fly on the wall and understand it would be so interesting because it felt like WE had a winning strategy in game one. They surprised their enemy team here of Samsung by going for this pick comp, the 1 3 1 comp, by getting priority. They didn't draft for it, but they played smartly in the early game. They took their lumps and they looked really good for it. And then from there, they only really looked at death balls. They only really looked at wombo combos. They never returned to the idea of having, say, two very powerful champions who could force mismatches in the side lane and then force fights through teleports. They went for the wombo, and Samsung, they answered the first time, the second time. By the time it was the third time, you just didn't feel like WE could get back into the series. Yeah, and, and to me, the biggest thing about Samsung, when I look at Professional League of Legends in general, I feel that the team who makes the least mistakes wins the games very, very often. And Samsung is just a team that makes so few mistakes. They give so few opportunities to their opponents. Anytime you're like, okay, WE needs to make a play now, Samsung knows that. They play to their opponent's win conditions. They don't give you those. They ward the flanks. They anticipate TPs coming in. And it just seems like they were always one step ahead of what WE wanted to do in the series. And that was very obvious when we look at game three and four. You just felt like Samsung was not going to give it away at any point. But then the question is, this was also... A bit of a criticism maybe coming in beforehand. Are they too slow? But it seems like the possible criticism of too slow has turned into the positive of the most calculated team in the tournament. I think both SKT and Samsung have been very good at losing the minimum. Where, say, for example, there's a gankable lane. If that doesn't lead to the maximum for the enemy, the NAR is down the bot lane, split pushing. They're getting a mid lane rotation as well. They're growing gold leads, even if someone does die. And sometimes flash and other movement abilities is enough to get them out. And the balance of those trades tips towards Samsung again and again because they're low risk, high reward, rather than these high risk, high reward trades that it seemed like WE was going for. And I'd even say that WE's playstyle, I think, kind of plays into Samsung's hand because they want to play this slow, measured game where they get to the team fight stage and they take over there. And I think that kind of plays into how Samsung wants to play the game because they're not being pushed. They're allowed to make the decisions that they want. They're allowed to control the map to get vision because WE you know, was not making those super proactive plays for the most part. Yes, they did in game one when they got the perfect draft. They're able to be aggressive, but without engage coming in from their support, without you know the aggressive ways to actually start the fights, Samsung simply splits the map and they kind of dismantled their opponents. But I do think that SKT is a team that could push the pace, that could be able to actually, you know, force the game to such a state that Samsung cannot sit back and comfortably set up the style that they want to play. It felt like particularly when they had a 2-0-2 cannon into the NAR, known counter yeah. pick one, the QV has picked a lot. You never felt like 957 was going to stifle QV out of a side lane, stop him from doing things, and they get an advantage over 957 being strong. And given that they never played that way, it can't be a big surprise. This is usually a team with a low economy, low jungle proximity, teleport in and win a team fight with Mystic. There were just no teleports to First team fight. First Kenan pick in two years of play for him. Well, we'll see what Second. <laughs> we'll see what comes out next week because after all of that, after six weeks, we end up with the same stage at the final as we did last year. Uh, a fantastic rematch set up uh, in Beijing, and it's almost a question of which storyline is the coolest. Well, they're both amazing, as well. Yeah, and it is a different SKT, but it's very cool to see that the exact same roster from Samsung made it back two times in a row, both times considered by a lot of people to be the weakest of the three Korean teams and both times proving that very incorrect. Well, when I was talking, sorry to jump in, I just wanted to mention it. When I was talking in the interviews to uh, the players, Crown didn't want to say too much, but he said, well, the main difference is that we're more relaxed overall. If I'd had to point out something that we've grown at, he even said it wouldn't be so sad if we lost, but I don't think that's I think true. that's really <laughs> weird. <laughs> I think it's, if you use sports analogies, and it's very adapt to this particular sport, they have a lot more games of experience than I mentioned on the cast. Call JJ just roll swap before Worlds. Now he's a very experienced uh, support. You have the AD carry and ruler who was in his first split last year. Now he's played a year and a half. You can see in this tournament, they have had their own peaks and troughs. Maybe SKT have kind of meandered their way in 10 games to the final. Samsung had a group stage, which was not impressive. They were second seed out of their group, and there were clear weaknesses. They have experience. They took away. They dissected. It is the same lineup from last year, but I like the fact that they can make those changes. And even after losing in game one, Game two to four felt like game one didn't happen for the Samsung mindset. They just returned to trying to steamroll forward, and they did it well.
Yeah, they did. So if we look ahead, where are the openings? Because we could come back to that point you touched on at the beginning of the show, Azale, the resilience coming out of SKT and the fact that you can never count them out. And also that man in the middle lane, Faker, who when everything seemed to be going wrong, he turns it on, he turns the game around. Seemingly no problem. And it's not like Crown is having the tournament of his life either. So what are we expecting to that mid lane matchup? I mean, I, I think that the mid lane matchup should certainly go heavily in Faker's, Faker's side. I think that he played so incredibly well throughout the entire tournament. And Crown was was fine today, but I did not think he was outstanding. And to me, the openings from SKT come more in the jungle, which is kind of this unknown situation. Are they going to start peanut? Are they going to start blank? What are they going to do? Neither player is really having standout performances. And as well, in the bot lane, right? We need to see Samsung be able to plan around that, be able to show the ability to adapt and to perhaps punish those players in the earlier stages. Because I think that if you give SKT this slow early game, they are a team that can match and best you in the later stages. It's worth noting that this stage, this next six days or so till the grand final, is so different to the rest of the tournament. There's no one to scrim. You know, it's only Samsung and SKT as the active teams. Maybe you get a scrim with a Chinese team. Maybe one of these rosters doesn't go instantly on break, but realistically, there won't be time to scrim. So this will sound crazy, but I actually like the idea of changing the mid lane dynamic because SKT, five games of Gallio, Faker could be the ultimate playmaker. Play through my lane. I'll go to other lanes. I'll be able to split push and respond. No. <laughs> he could do everything, right? He could do everything. And if he does everything in the grand final, if you plug in some kills here and there, they probably win. That's just the reality of how good and dominant a player Faker is. However, you take away the Galio pick, and suddenly someone else needs to be the carry. Someone else is more accountable. Your mistakes aren't going to be papered over by the hero's entrance popping in. So some, if you can set up a situation like you think of a Faker Cassio, game things go wrong he's in a side lane farming there are other places you can do strong things there are other areas you can attack if you try just leave faker to be the quarterback to be the playmaker i think you lose so much to think about uh during this week so very quickly who's winning the final papa smithy and azale one word skt samsung all right well big statement send on this last world tonight and that will be it from shanghai we'll see you on two occasions next week on friday for league of legends live that wonderful concert and of course on saturday for the world championship final between skt and samsung we'll be there one hour before the match for the pre-show we'll see you then good night legends never die they become a part of you. The unenviable task of facing SK Telecom in the finals is what's at stake here, gentlemen. And I know where the crowd is cheering behind the last LPL representative. Condi runs for his life. Now it's just burning. It's something he'll force to be used. Dice by Mystic. Kubo's going to try to turn it off. Oh, no! They're hitting all the brilliance. They're hitting away on Shia. Shia clears out the wave. And this venue. The flat, the Durant toss, that gets another. This fight's getting messy, and the Dazzle sets up a stun for Ben to set up a kill. Round here! Three man body slap from Ambition, and now everybody turns their attention to the crowd. He's gonna get dropped, taken down, and Team WE trade four for two. Now it's a full on 5v5. Shot rate pulls back too, but it's not only the front line. Or JJ gets feasted down, and Samsung wins. They get the first kill. The quickness, the three man knock up into the hero's entrance. Look at the knock up and the damage down. 957 over the slicing maelstrom. He's doing what he can to turn around. It's too little, it's too late. Rula flashes and heals to safety. He gets one. Look at the IR into the wall. Triple kill picked up for Rula. Ben's flashed away to safety. Now she is the target. Samsung Galaxy set their sights on the Summoner's Cup and qualify for a rematch with Escape Telecom in the Championship Finals.